uh, which means that the microbiological load of uh, one contaminated grape is the same as the one uh, held by a ton of healthy grapes. These microorganisms that are naturally present in the grape are going to develop uh, during fermentation at a variable speed, depending on the pH, the uh, sulfur dioxide temperature, and also depending on its initial population. Then what are the problems of these types of microorganisms? In the beginning, the non-saccharomyces yeasts that are uh, highly concentrated in the grapes, both uh, healthy and attacked grapes, apart from the fact that in their sugar consumption, they produce acetic acid. It is important also to bear in mind the consumption of certain nutrients, not only sugar, because uh, sugar is not greatly consumed at the beginning, but they can con also consume some nitrogen and uh, other uh, very easily assimilable compounds and thiamine as well. Lactic bacteria, on their hand, they can produce uh, acetic acid and acetaldehyde, and they can produce diacetyl uh, with a characteristic buttery um, aroma and also biogenic amines uh, or amines. Well, normally we think about stamina um, because it provokes some um, harm to health, like allergies, etc. But there are other amines like putrescine and cadaverine that affect greatly the perfection of fruit. And then late, uh, last but not least, the acetic bacteria, and you know what they produce. And apart from these compounds, uh, many more are known to be able to combine with sulfur dioxide, and some of them are produced by microorganisms. We know, uh, for example, gluconic acid. We know that grapes uh, attacked by botrytis have very high levels of gluconic acid, but also pyruvate and acetaldehyde. Um, and if the levels of these compounds are high, then it is going to be very difficult to reach um, the desired level of free compounds. And, and then you know that uh, the life of these wines uh, are going to be uh, complicated and it's going to be difficult to get uh, free sulfur dioxide. And in many cases, they need to overcome to exceed 150 milligrams. And uh, in terms of the vitamin consumption or thiamine or vitamin B1, this is necessary by microorganisms to produce energy. And this autochthonous flora coming in with the grapes consume thiamine very quickly. And therefore, this thiamine is not uh, available for Saccharomyces uh, cerevisiae. And it is not available for uh, py pyruvate and acetaldehyde. And therefore, um, the preservation of the wine with sulfur dioxide is going to be complicated. And one of the microorganisms that is of high concern is also the non-saccharomyces, the bretanomyces. And this is why chitosan is so effective. It has biocompatibility. The mechanism differs depending on the compound. But basically, chitosan is able to introduce itself within the or inside the membrane of cells. And then uh, this is how it works. Basically, in a first phase, because of hydrostatic attraction, it adheres to the membrane of the non-saccharomyces yeast molecule or cell, where it uh, gets to the uh, membrane proteins, and it alters the structure of this membrane, and it is able to get inside the cell, to introduce it, to penetrate the cell. Then it generates some pores that uh, modify some essential elements in the cytoplasm, cytoplasm, and it alters the uh, functioning of some enzymes, and it can even alter the genetic material of the cell. So now we're going to speak about the applications 
We've seen that the microbiological load of uh, cells and musts can be high. Why then should we treat these musts or the wines before the fermentation with chitosan? In the first phases, we've seen that the must conditions are rather favorable for the growth of many microorganisms, such as the non-saccharomyces yeasts that can reduce essential nutrients or some growth factors that are essential for the yeast, and therefore we can create difficulties to the development and uh, the growth of uh, these um, of saccharomyces. And therefore, when we sow saccharomyces, the medium can be poor in some oligo elements, and therefore we can um, put some difficulties to its development. This development uh, by saccharomyces in difficult conditions can lead to the development of lactic bacteria, and therefore we will see the start of uh, malolactic fermentation at the same time. Or maybe those yeasts would not be strong enough so as to finish uh, fermentation, and therefore that would be a case of stuck and sluggish fermentations. And we can also see the use of uh, metabolites that are the increase of metabolites that are easily uh, combined with um, sulfur dioxide. Therefore, in terms of applications, we should uh, use uh, chitosan during the maceration of white um, grape, normally at a low temperature. The non-saccharomyces has the have the evolutionary advantage of being able to function well at low temperatures. And otherwise, we can uh, uh, perform a pre-fermentative maceration or add it to the press must or the clean must. And for this application, we have developed the MicroStab pH, which is a liquid product, uh, and therefore, the application is really easy because of its liquidity. And we also favor dispersal of chitosan, which is necessary for uh, to obtain a good effect. And in fact, this product has been uh, specifically designed to use it in the harvest or even uh, use dosification systems such as the Pixis, which is the line dosification system that we have for the treatment of musts. Another application of chitosan before fermenting would be the multiplication of yeasts. What did we see in Agrovin when we were looking for the design of a specific nutrient for such complicated conditions? Well, in our laboratory, we performed, we conducted some tests so as to determine what kind of nutrition uh, produces this biomass. With uh, such a nutrient, we saw that there was a considerable increase in the population of yeasts to the necessary levels in a multiplier, but we also realized that not only the yeasts were growing, but other microorganisms were also growing. In fact, there was a very important growth of lactic bacteria, and we also saw that the non-saccharomyces yeasts were, uh, the presence was also high. In this test, well, we conducted several tests, and one of them, we used the clean must of the winery, and then we also tested with concentrated must, and we also saw that there were some contamination problems even using this type of must, even though the contaminations were lower, of course. And due to all this, we decided to use a chitosan and add it to this specific nutrient design for the multiplication. Of course, firstly, we uh, perform the uh, self, um, the auto lysis of uh, yeasts with high content in sterols, uh, such as ergosterol and mineral salts that are non exogenous ones. And um, they can use it if they are uh, under the form of inactive yeast. Then we also added um, non organic nitrogen as. Uh, ammonia phosphate, and also thiamine, which guarantees the uh, an enough, a content enough of uh, 
vitamin B1 so that the yeasts can get their energy. And then we added fungal chitosan. And what we saw was that after some tests, we had the growth of the yeasts that we needed for the application in multipliers, but we also saw that the lactic bacteria could not develop. And then another application of or advantage of chitosan is that it enables, it allows us to reduce the amount of sulfur dioxide that we use. We know that the market and the consumers are uh, putting things, making things difficult for us in terms of sulfur dioxide. And then there is a fashion for wines with no sulfur dioxide. We know that Kaitosan works very well, even considering the reduction of microorganisms. But my question is, is it an alternative to sulfur dioxide? Well, when we use Kaitosan, we want to reduce the use of sulfur dioxide. But what happens with oxidation? In Agrovin, we have designed MicroStab Protect to cover the needs um, satisfied by uh, sulfur dioxide and, and anhydridous um, compound. And we have the antioxidant protection given by the glutathione and glutathion, sorry, and it also um, protects the aromatic fraction um, because of this natural antioxidant effect. And I would like to comment on a couple of less known actor, uh, factors or effects. If you see the graph on the top left, uh, we always thought that pH was a limiting factor for life because under a certain pH, uh, organisms would not develop or would develop very little. But we saw that it is not only pH, but also the electrochemical or uh, redox potential also influences this development. We know that for every organism, there, are, there is a redox potential. Um, under which the organism cannot progress, cannot develop. We know that fermentation will stop under a certain redox potential because the yeast is not able to develop under this redox potential. So under the same consideration, I would like to speak a little bit about acetic bacteria. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, acetic bacteria need oxygen, and uh, need a high redox potential to be able to develop. I don't know if I mentioned this, but we do know um, after some studies and tests that chitosan is not effective against acetic bacteria. So what did we achieve with MicroStab Protect? Due to its glutathione, glutathione, we have achieved to reduce the redox potential of the wine, and therefore we have put some barriers to the development of lactic bacteria. 